Welcome to the Nail, I'm Ashley. I'm Brian. Fortnite is big, sure, but is it hurting other games with its success? Is it coming at the expense of other games in the marketplace? There's no doubt that Fortnite, it's one of the breakout hits of this generation. It might not have been the first Battle Royale game, but it's definitely become the biggest. Absolutely, and its numbers since it launched last September are staggering, just any way you want to break it down. Fortnite's been played by 125 million people as of early last month. It took Minecraft years to get to those kinds of numbers. And Minecraft was a juggernaut. The game's on track to generate $2 billion this year, making its parent company, Epic Games, worth anywhere between $5 billion to $8 billion, depending on who you ask. It's also being played by some of the most famous people in the world, athletes. Oh, remember when Drake teamed up with Ninja on a street, basically broke the internet? Why? <laughs> this is such a big deal. But maybe it's become such a big deal that it's hurting some other games. And its success may be masking some bigger issues with the gaming industry, especially on the console side of things. Superdata released some interesting research that kind of pours some cold water on some people's claims that Fortnite is helping to grow the industry. That's true to some degree, but it also looks like it's cannibalizing players from other big games. So while it's slice of the pie is pretty big, it's not making the pie bigger. Right. Of course that happens a bunch. Players will get tired of a game, they move on to something else. Ask PUBG, but they are experiencing that. Yeah, but it looks like Fortnite is doing that to a much larger degree than we've seen in previous games. Well, for one, you're a typical Fortnite player, probably a fan or maybe used to be a fan of some other pretty big franchises. That's usually how that works. <laughs> Superdata found that there's a considerable overlap between a Fortnite player and those who play games like League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and Overwatch. So when it comes to watching games on platforms like Twitch, and admittedly that is very different from playing, but we have played data as well. Uh, Superdata noticed that in the second quarter, Fortnite's total hours watched were up 59%, which is huge. Mm -hmm. But that's not true for other games, as could be seen uh, for League of Legends, for example, was down 19%, Overwatch dropped 16%, Counter-Strike Global Offensive down 51%. That's a pretty big drop off and it looks like it's due at least partly to the success of Fortnite. Yeah, Superdata wrote, granted some of these are highly dependent on tournaments and experience fluctuations around them. Esports heavy titles draw much larger online audiences around and during events, but that does not negate the fact that a relative newcomer has successfully managed to push incumbent titles down the rankings. And speaking of tournaments, Blizzard is facing an important test soon because the over Overwatch League finals had begun, and with Fortnite still riding high, it'll be interesting to see how much it takes away from Overwatch's viewer numbers. Okay, but, so, viewers, one thing, mm -hmm. they're not generally the money spender, so let's talk about what does matter to the publishers, and that is the people buying and playing games and spending money on them. And there's a lot of evidence that Fortnite is making a lot of people a lot of money, not just Epic Games. Since it's a free to play game that's available on a bunch of different platforms, a lot of different game publishers and console makers are seeing a bump in revenue thanks to Fortnite. Interesting. Mm -hmm. During this past quarter, Microsoft reported a 39% increase in earnings from its gaming division, which it attributed largely to third party publishing. They didn't say which games were responsible for that growth, but pretty much everyone agrees that it's Fortnite. That's significant because the Xbox One has been lagging behind the PlayStation 4 all generation, but it still saw a healthy earnings boost, and that could be thanks to just one game. Well, here's an even more interesting point. During the last quarter, total digital console sales for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were combined up 49% year over year compared to the previous year. That's good. Right? Generally, you do want the number to go <laughs> up and to the left. If you take Fortnite out of the total, though, Superdata says that those revenues for PlayStation and Xbox, they actually declined year on year, which is the opposite direction of the graph. Which means that the console industry might not be growing in terms of sales as much as some people think it is. Well, the theory that a lot of big publishers are putting forward is that a rising tide lifts all boats. That Fortnite is a net good because it brings new gamers into the fold and then those gamers will stay and they will spend money on other games and other things and other subscription services. But what these numbers also shows that while that might be true to some degree, it's also true that Fortnite is stealing players from existing games, and the success of Fortnite might be hiding a bigger overall problem with the console industry declining revenues. No one wants that. No. <laughs> As Superdata put it, where previously no execs admitted to a loss in player activity or spending, it is increasingly clear that the newcomer is taking market share from existing titles. In addition to adding new players to the market, uh, after a period of growth, the market is set to return to its usual zero-sum dynamic. 
And zero sum basically means if I take something from you, that means there's only one thing to go around. So if I take something, you lose something. Now it's important to note, we're just talking about console revenues for PlayStation and Xbox here, but still not a good sign for them that one game is responsible for so much of the overall pie. Yeah, well, as for the global games market, which includes things like mobile games, it is still doing just fine in totals. According to market intelligence firm Nuzu, 2.3 billion gamers worldwide are gonna spend a total of 100 $137.9 billion in games this year. That's a year over year increase of more than 13%. That's a good sign. But for the first time ever, the global games industry this year is going to get more than half of that revenue from mobile. Ugh. 51%. See, see, this is why Fantasy Life 2 went mobile and it yep. makes me so upset, but Ugh. here we are. As for the other half of that pie, it's about evenly split between console and PC with console taking a, just a slightly larger share. Nusu says that the industry overall is going to keep growing by a double digit rate up to $180 billion in 2021. By that point though, 59% of those revenues will be mobile. So if you're wondering why they came out with a mobile version of Fortnite and PUBG, that's why. We're Mobile's where the growth is. Every single AAA yeah. game will be released for <sighs> phones and tablets oh, now. This is the dystopian Yay. future. Oh. Uh, as for Fortnite, looks like things aren't slowing down anytime soon. So we'll see if games like Black Ops 4, Battlefield 5, both of which are going to have Battle Royale modes, will be able to take a bite out of the success and sort of take back a bit of that share of pie since they kind of need it. Yeah. So what do you guys think about research that says Fortnite is cannibalizing audiences from other games? Let us know in the comments. And for all your gaming news, make sure you like this video. If you're new around here, subscribe to The Now. Super Data released some interesting research that shows at least partly to the success of Fortnite. Yeah, Super Data wrote, granted some of these are highly dependent on tournaments that experience fluctuations around them, but he's yeah, so definitely, yes. If you take Fortnite out of the total though, Fortnite 